Good morning, North America. Welcome to Church Talk TV, lively talk about life, church, and church life. I'm your co-host, Dr. Bill Tenney Britton, and I'm joined as usual by my co-host, Dr. Chris Tenney Britton, and we're broadcasting from our studio in Columbia, Missouri, the heartland of America. Say good morning, Chris. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Church Talk TV. Chris and Bill Tenney Britton here to talk to you about, hey, how to do guest follow-up so that at least 50% of your first-time visitors return and so you can grow your church. Yes, well, we did a recent episode on how to get contact information, but too often churches don't leverage that important tool. And we talked about it in terms of worship, but you know, sometimes yeah. you get... a. a Worship and uh, contact information by, you know, maybe you have a door prize at an event. And yeah, you get I love sign that. Yeah, That's and, one of my favorites. Yeah, and, and you, have to have, you have to give us all your information so we can contact you for winning this, you know, 50 or $75, you know, prize of some description. People go, well, yeah, hey, I want that. And now you get really a great list of contact information from people in your community. Well, let me say, one of the creative ways I've seen that done is that you have the invitation cards that you're using, these, you know, just little bits of cards that your folks are able to use, uh, the folks of your, your church are able to use and send to their friends or give to, you know, previous guests or whatever, but on the back of that card so that they can even fill it out beforehand is their the name, the address, all the information you need. So when they come, they just drop it into the box for those, I always want to call them door prizes. Yeah, but door prizes. Yeah. I was thinking hostess gifts, but yeah, okay. Whatever. okay. So if you've got the complete information, let's go go with that. And uh, and we're talking about worship first, yeah, right? right? So well, go ahead. That's all go the ahead. same. I mean, really, truly. Yeah, okay. But what, but you, if you get complete information, in other words, you got their email address, you got their mobile phone number, and you have a home address, we're going to talk about that primarily. But if you don't get it all, you can adapt, okay? Yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But the first thing, yeah. the first thing, let's, and let's talk again, talk about worship, yeah. but it works for any event. On the day of the event, or if you will, Sunday afternoon, and I'm going to go, oh, I'm so tired Sunday. Yes, you want to grow your church? Hey, Sunday afternoon is the time to do it. And you take a gift to them, a gift of value, value, something that will last, and they'll go, oh, and they'll keep it. And it's not like cookies. They're going to eat them and forget about you. Not about a pie or a loaf of bread. It's something that, that, that that's of value to them that they'll hang on to. And you also want to give them, with that gift of value, an invitation to the next event, whether it's a you know a written card or a brochure of the next sermon series or a, 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 a free ticket to the screening of some movie you're showing or whatever. And you want to give them, of course, church information. And here's the key. If you have an average worship attendance of less than 200, this is the pastor's job. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of pushback. Oh, we know. I know the pastor, you're busy. But I can tell you that we've worked with churches all across the United States for a lot of years. Yes. And now this did change about 15 years ago. It used right. to be you send a layperson. Right. But now you send the pastor because people want to meet the big cheese. They want to meet the CEO. They want to meet that person who was up front talking to them. Now, you're not going in there to have a conversation. You're not going to accept an invitation to, oh, come oh, in, no, pastor, because yeah. mm -hmm. you're inconveniencing right, them. Right. You're just there to drop off a gift, right. say, hey, thanks for being here, and I got this for you, and I hope we'll see you next Sunday. And then you walk away. In, out, never into the door, regardless of whatever it is that they give you. And let, let me tell you how impressed people are by that. And one of my former pastorates, I had uh, someone who lived in a gated community, and I figured out how to get into that gated community. Ooh, and sneaky. I know that they were <laughs> mad at about it. They're like, whoa, you know, you really wanted to find us. Yes, I did, because we're so excited. And, and that was in a, a church that was about 200 that we were able to to do that there we are there. okay now here if the church is over 200 then you want someone who is hopefully yeah. or preferably someone who was up front during the worship service they were in your guest was in so that you know that they, they recognize a face oh you were the person who read the scripture or you led the music or hey you're the drummer awesome you know someone hopefully they recognize the third option of course is just send someone who is a member of the church right. who is gregarious and loves doing this kind of thing. Yeah. 
There are some of us who All right, so stuff. that's what yeah, you do okay. Sunday. Now, right. now it's Monday. So on Monday, you want to drop a handwritten thank you card in the mail. But we have an alternative to this. This is one of my personal favorites. You could pastor instead of, and, and that card needs to come from the pastor, the lead pastor, the Absolutely. senior pastor, yeah. definitely. Even and, if it's not the lead pastor who actually did the physical writing. Right. It's got to come from the pastor. Yes. The pastor signs it or someone signs it in absentia for the pastor. Right. I, that, yeah, you know, it, I, it, it's got to come from the pastor. Right. I had a, a former <laughs> administrator, and the running joke was, goodness forbid, something happened to her, because nobody would recognize my writing. Every day. It was always Leslie's writing. Uh, but here's the other piece. This is what I'm really loving. You do a uh, just a little video on your phone, and you say, hey, you know, I don't know, Chris Tenny Britton here, and I'm so... Just so, so you know, when you do it, you lift that phone up, you oh, yeah, down, so your nose isn't like that. It's all up here. Oh, right. okay. That's why my nose looks like that. And That's enough. <laughs> Well, he's learned it's up. But anyways, <laughs> you know, really glad that you're here. Or you were with us uh, yesterday and uh, just just wrote to say thank you. Thank you so much. If you need anything, hey, call the church. Boom, you're done. And then you One put it into... One minute or less. Oh, that, my goodness. That, that works yeah, nice on Instagram no for, I mean, you get in, in practice. Sure. But you're going to send this directly to the person, assuming, of course, you have their email yeah. or a Really, text. text. Yeah, way. I would right. say it needs to go via text. Yeah, text. Yeah. Text is first choice. Email, second choice. Right. And, of course, putting it in an envelope isn't going to work. So in that case, you'd write a thank you card. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Okay, we got to keep moving All right, here. Tuesday. All right. On Tuesday, mail the newsletter. If you're still doing a physical copy... I'm not sure who's doing that anymore. But if you're still doing a physical copy, put it in the mail. And if not, um, send it via email. But if you're going to send it by email, make sure you write a personalized piece. Hey, Bob and Mary, it's so great to see you. Thanks for being here. It's not just a merge file. with Dear Bob, blah. You know, an actual little tidbit that says, hey, we, we enjoyed seeing you. Thought you would like the newsletter, let you know what's going on in our church and some of the some of the ways in which you can plug in. Right. So. Okay. So on Thursday, then a lay person makes a phone call. I want to say this. When we, we talk lay person, often we don't think about clergy. I'm clergy, but the church that I'm in, I am not on staff. So I can make a phone call right. in yeah. that case. Right. right? It, so not I'm, the lead pastor. In yeah. Other words. No, not someone on staff. <laughs> right. Okay. Not a staff person makes a phone call, introduce yourself. And, you know, if you didn't get to, to meet them, then you say, Hey, you know, um, this is Chris, uh, Tenny Britton. I was, uh, I, I saw that you were at the service, but I didn't get to meet you. And I, I just wanted to call and say hi and how glad we were that you're or glad we are that you were there. Um, I, but I would love to meet you on Sunday and uh, and or right or we're having a game to do on uh, on Saturday. And I've so, always wanted to go to do my game to do to do. To do to do. <laughs> and so you know, if you'd like, I would I would love to meet you there and just and and to get to say hello. And if you're you know just trying to make your way around, I know I'm not always like really comfortable in new situations and with the people I don't know. But uh, I would so I would love to uh, I would love to meet you there if you'd like that. And uh, also called because I want to see if you have any questions. So that's Thursday. Thursday. Friday, send a text. If you have the text number, send them a text and say, hey, good to have you. I hope, hope you'll be there Saturday on uh, Saturday. On Sunday, the sermon topic is such and such. The title is such and such. And of course, if you don't have a mobile number, you can send that via email. But text mm -hmm. is, is by far right now the most personal and more likely right. to be seen. Let me say a thing about text. So uh, uh, a lot of times pastors are sending pieces on their text. Please don't do that. Have a, a text number so that they can text you back. Uh, I, I have a Skype number so that I'm able to make uh, a call, uh, send texts or whatever. Google Make voice calls. Has that yeah, now. right. Exactly. I have that. I haven't figured it out yet. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, so you can, but don't use your own personal text uh, for anything, your really. Personal cell phone, she means. Right. Yeah. So they don't have your number. And they can call you at ten o'clock at night. Away. Say, hey, Pastor. Hey. Anyway. All right. Okay. So again, if that's on that, Friday. that's your Friday, and that's the end of the end of it. Um, if you have partial information, like you got just the didn't get the email, or you did get the email but not mm -hmm. the address, you got the mobile, whatever, just make some adjustments. But you want to make sure you're doing at least three or four touches during the week because th those three or four touches are critical to getting people to move 
towards your that, well, move towards coming back a second time. So let me take that piece about doing the video. Uh, that if someone, uh, if you don't, if you did get a cell phone or you did get an email, do that on Sunday afternoon if you right. don't have their yep. address. But I'm not saying that to let you off the hook because I can hear a lot of us saying, oh, okay, oh, she said I could do it. No, 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 no. Right. That is only if you did not get their address Re and you're not into stock. Remember, the whole point of this is to make an impression that is indelibly made into their mind that they really appreciated that I was there. They really noticed me. Um, they would like to have me back. So it, this is about making a really great impression. They'll notice if I don't come back. Right, right? that's right. That's right. Okay, so you know, some people, we've heard this too. That seems <laughs> really excessive. People do not want uh, people following up with them like that. I feel like, like you're that. stalking me. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That used to be the case until probably 15 plus years ago. So it, <clears throat> they do appreciate that, that, you know, well, I, you know, people don't like to be called out in worship. Well, no, they don't. We said this before. Don't, you know, they don't want to be don't stand, have up, stand and all up and that stuff, say, yeah, right. either, you know. but, but they, they want to know that they were noticed. Cheers, you right. know, right. Everybody knows your name. Right. And, and the reality is this isn't about you and right. what you like. We often project on our visitors what yeah. we think. We know this works. We've been doing this now for over a decade. And churches that Longer. put this into practice, I can tell you that there's a church here in Missouri that we worked with, and they went from an average return rate of 6%, 6% of their first time visitors returned, to over 85%. That's amazing. Literally. And of course, that's 85% of those who are actually local visitors. You don't count the people who flew in from California and were going back home the next week. That's yeah, not what we're talking they about. They were guests. But, you know, yeah, they, they, yeah. But right. the, the reality is, is 85% of their visitors return yeah. because of their fabulous follow-up. Yes, yes, so, yes. Uh, real quick, right, I want yeah. to touch on this gift of value. Yeah, we, you know, this we, is important. Almost every church I know seems to think that everybody needs another mug that that <laughs> mugs are really an incredible gift and, and if you really want to know where your mugs end up go to goodwill because there's all sorts of church mugs there because i mean let's be honest do you really need another mug that your mechanic gives you a mug the the uh, the, the the hairdresser gives you a mug Perfect. you know everyone gives mugs so right. Let's get away from the mugs yeah. and let's offer something of value. Now, well, something that's different. That, right. Right. And, and, I mean, again, a makes value, an impression, right. yeah. a real impression. Woohoo. So, something that, that, you know, we know of. Uh, and, and, uh, well, well, the church that gets the 85% back, right. They give a Max Licato devotional book. There it is. They go out and invest and they buy and buy the case and they have this Max Licato devotional book. They write something on the flyleaf of it and they drop it off. Um, and the pastor, it's not they, the pastor goes out every Sunday afternoon and drops this off to first time visitors. And again, they have an 85% return rate. So right. that's incredible. Well, one of my favorites is you can get on Amazon these little miniature honey pots. Yeah. You know, they're so cute. There are, is it ceramic? They're yeah, white yes, ceramic, they has a little flower or bee on it, I'm not sure which. Uh, and it's too small to see. Uh, anyways, so they have this little piece and you go, it's even got the little uh, stirrer stick in there, and, a and, wood one. Right. Like and, that. But you want to, because they're not brandable. You can't right. go and buy them from and they'll no, stand, no. but you uh, turn it upside down and with a very fine permanent marker, you write your church's URL. That's all you got to write, your church's URL on there. And that 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 honey pot will is so beautiful. It yes. sits it sits there either on the breakfast table, yes. breakfast nook or next yes. to the toaster. Yes. And every time they see it, they'll remember your church. And you can get little honey bears and put local honey into That's them. Right. So I, yeah, a church I pastored in transition at one time, I just had a big bottle of local honey and I put it in there. And if you really want to go a next step, you can say this works really well for allergies. All right. Go so ahead. the last thing I want to, the last gift of value, I want to yeah. say, this is, this was excessive, except for this church grew from like less than 50 to literally hundreds of yes, people and yes, the pastor yes. i'm not suggesting this pastor but the pastor began by doing this out of his own pocket um, because he was so committed to his church growth he sent he got the information and on monday he sent out a fedex box that included a bible a gas card a 25 dollar gas card they sent the obligatory mug <laughs> 
They also, if the oh, family like had this, had yeah. kids, they took pictures during Sunday school of the kids having a great time, and they would print that off on photo paper and, of course, the church information. And he would bundle that up and set it out in a FedEx box so it arrived on Tuesday. And here, he, they, they paid overnight shipping. He did this even if you weren't local. If you were visiting from another another state, you got this FedEx box anyway. It was costing a lot of money, but I can tell you, do you know how we found out about it? Someone visited in uh, from the Midwest, and they had visited uh, this church in the um, the Northeast. Yeah. And they had this this family actually lived in Colorado, and they got that box, and they told everybody, including. We were at a party, and the the uh, host of the party said, "Hey, let me tell you about uh, this follow up that my friend got." Yeah. Now this is like, it, you want to talk about making an impression? The whole point of all of this is to make an impression. Said, "Hey, that church cares about me." Well, and an impression that they talk about it That's to right. their friends, <laughs> you right. know, because everybody wants people to know their name. We want to count. Well, okay, we are almost out of time. So we want to refer you again to churchhospitality.us. Down here, you'll find the Earl. And there you're going to find a short course on how to turn your visitors into members. All right, so we really are out of time. We'll see you next week. Hey, have a great week. 